This is the paper pattern I will be using to make the bifold wallet. Start by roughly cutting out each of the pattern pieces from the five pages. I will be using this crocodile leather hide for the exterior of the wallet. This hide is around two meters long in a Himalayan crocodile color with a matte finish. This is the section that I will be using for this project. I will start by cutting out this rectangular section from the hide so I can work with a more manageable size. This is the leather I will be using for the cash pocket divider. It is a piece of French calfskin leather. It has been skived down to 0.5mm thick to minimise added thickness to the wallet. This is the leather that I will use for the interior and lining of the wallet. It is Butero vegetable tan leather in an orange colour. The leather for the interior is 1mm thick. And the leather for the lining is 0.5mm thick. I will start by using the pattern to roughly cut out small sections of the leather. Then apply tokenol to the flesh side of each section and burnish until smooth using a glass slicker so that the flesh side is shiny and finished. Apply the pattern again and this time use scotch tape to stick the paper to the leather. Then begin to carefully cut out each piece of the pattern. After all the pieces are cut, I will apply my maker's stamp and logo to the two front pocket sections. These are all of the leather pieces cut out and ready to be assembled. I will start by working on the card pocket sections of the wallet. The first step will be to skive the tea pockets. Skiving on the lower section of each tea pocket will help to reduce the bulk around the pockets. Next, edge crease the top of each pocket and then edge bevel the edges. Apply tokenol to the edges and burnish using a wood slicker to finish off the tops of all of the pocket pieces. Use a pattern to mark in the limits of each tea pocket. Then mark in a 6mm gluing offset and rough up the gluing area. Apply contact cement to each piece of leather and double sided fabric tape to the bottom of the tea pocket. Then carefully stick in the first tea pocket. Mark in a stitching line and then chisel stitching holes on the bottom edge of the tea pocket. The thread I will be using for this project is Philo Chinois Lancablé in 632 size. It is a linen thread that is 0.51mm thick. Cut the thread to length and then rub it with beeswax to help lubricate it. Then saddle stitch the bottom edge of the tea pocket. Cut the ends of the thread and use an awl to tuck the thread back into the hole. Then finish off with a dab of white glue to lock the thread in place and hammer down on the stitches to flatten them out. Apply contact cement again, then carefully stick on the remaining tea pocket and front pocket. Trim off the inside edge of the pockets, then mark in the position of the stitching line and punch out the stitching holes using pricking irons. Use saddle stitching to stitch the sides of both pocket sections. Put in a crease line on the stitched edge and then use an edge beveler to round off the edge. Apply tokenol and burnish to finish off the edge. With the two pocket sides complete, we can now join them to the middle layer panel. Before gluing, I will skive the sides of the middle panel which will help keep the edges of the wallet thin. Then, mark in the positions of the pocket panels and rough up the gluing area. 
apply contact cement to all three pieces. Then carefully stick on each side of the wallet to the middle layer. And then hammer down on the edges. Trim off the excess material around the perimeter to get the middle layer panel to the final size. Next step is to put in the stitching line on the top edge and then finish it with edge creasing, beveling and then burnishing to complete the middle layer panel for now. Now let's work on the cash pocket divider. For the first step, I will sky the two sides which will stop the divider adding thickness to the edges of the wallet. Then mark in the gluing limit on the divider and apply contact cement to both pieces of leather. Use wax paper to prevent the pieces from sticking too early. Then carefully stick on the liner onto the top of the divider. Trim off the excess leather at the top of the divider and then edge crease and bevel the tops of both sides. Burnish the top edge with a wood slicker to complete the divider section of the wallet for now. Now let's work on the exterior of the wallet. The first step is to apply the lining onto the crocodile leather. Apply contact cement to both the crocodile and the lining. And again use wax paper to prevent the pieces from sticking too early and carefully begin to stick on the crocodile and apply pressure to bond it properly. Here I am using this molding aid to help put a bend in the exterior leather. This gives the wallet a natural bend and reduces the tendency of the lining leather to crease when folded. Next, trim off the edges to get the exterior to its final dimensions. Now that the exterior has been cut to size, the next step is to put a stitching line along the top edge. Mark in the stitching line with dividers and chisel in the stitching holes with pricking irons. Saddle stitch across the top of the exterior. Then hammer down the stitches to flatten them out. For this project, I will be using vernis edge paint. I will use mostly white paint and mix in a touch of brown paint to create an off-white colour that will best match the Himalayan crocodile. Apply only a thin layer of paint on the top edge to start. Then apply a crease line to both the inside and outside top edge. Sand and repaint the top edge until smooth, then finish by applying wax to the edge and buffing it using a canvas cloth. With the exterior section of the wallet complete, now I can begin assembling the three main sections. Next, I will join the cash pocket divider to the exterior section. Mark in the limits of the gluing area on the exterior piece. Then rough up the gluing area. Center the divider onto the exterior, then mark in the position with an awl. Apply contact cement to both sections and carefully stick on both sides of the divider to the exterior section. Then hammer down on the edges to fully bond them together. Before I glue these two halves together, I will chisel stitching holes onto both halves separately. This will give the best looking stitching on the inside and on the outside of the wallet. Mark in the stitching line with dividers on both sections. Then plan and mark in the positions of all the stitching holes lightly with a chisel so that the holes on both pieces will be perfectly matching. Then punch out the marked stitching holes with pricking irons on both pieces. All the stitching holes have now been punched out on the exterior piece. I will now stitch and finish this center part on the bottom edge as I won't be able to do it later. With that bottom section complete, I can now apply contact cement to only one half of both pieces. Carefully stick the two halves together starting from the corner 
and working around the edges. Any mistakes here will make the stitching holes not be aligned. Apply pressure to the edges to make sure they are completely bonded together. Saddle stitch the glued half of the wallet. Because the stitching holes were chiseled in from both sides separately, it means there is no front and back side as they will both have identical looking stitching. I have completed the first half of the stitching up to this point. Next, I will apply contact cement and stick on the second half of the wallet. Again, being very careful to align the corners and edges as before. Now I can complete the stitching for the second half of the wallet. With the stitching complete, cut the ends of the thread and lock them in place. The next step is to finish off the remaining edges. Start by using sandpaper to smooth out the edges and apply a thin coat of edge paint using a dauber. Edge crease carefully around the perimeter and use the hot edge creaser to also smooth down the edge paint. Then sand the painted edge completely smooth and apply a thicker layer of edge paint. This is after the fourth layer of edge paint. Now I will rub the edges with wax and use the electric creaser on low heat to help smooth out the wax. Burnish the edge using canvas cloth until the edge is polished and shiny to complete the wallet. I am really happy how the wallet turned out, especially with the cash pocket divider which will make this wallet very practical to use. I have some more exotic leather projects coming up, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss them. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and comment. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.